So as these guys get up here, Annalise is going to be sharing, getting ready uh, to give her last words. And um, if you guys didn't know, Annalisa, every week, served uh, at Breakaway Shelby. She led a small group of girls uh, pouring into the next generation. I'm going to come back here. And um, what's been really, really cool is that at Breakaway, we never had worship. And then Annalisa was a Almost two years ago now, right? Yeah, two years ago, um, took the step and the risk to start leading worship. And it's been amazing. She's going to talk a little bit tonight about her fear and her voice and discovering how God wanted to use her. Uh, but it's, an, it's been an amazing journey, like watching you grow. And so I'm excited for you guys to hear it, because then she's going to lead us in a song, in a time of worship. And I really believe, like, as we kind of pick this and, and, and really decided on what you're going to do tonight, like, this song changed your life. Um, and what, what the picture I want you guys to have as she's sharing and as she's leading is that she's leading uh, the song tonight, No Longer Slaves, out of a place of actually understanding what that meant, of really being having that fear broken off your life and stepping in to understanding what it meant to be a child of God. So I'm excited. Get up for Annalisa. Uh, passage that's one of my favorites now, but if I read this off two years ago, this would not have made any sense to me at all. Um, it's from Romans 8, uh, verse 14 through 17. It says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children and heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs of Christ, provided to suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. So a lot of my story um, just used to be really just wrapped up in fear, and it just really prevented me from entering into the fullness and adventure Jesus had on the other side of that fear. And uh, when I say that, yeah, like literally, even two years ago, one year ago, I was just afraid of literally everything. I wouldn't talk to people super insecure, um, I wouldn't really leave my room or my house because I was just so afraid to like even just be with people because I just thought that people would see my insecurities right away and um, even just talking to people was just so difficult for me because um, just talking one on one with people I would just have a stutter because I would just be, I would just be so afraid of, of what to say and uh, before I even got any words out because I thought that my voice was just irrelevant and um, I wasn't worth being heard but uh, and my view of God was just so just so distorted because I thought that God was someone that was going to leave me and he um, didn't um, really believe in myself, didn't believe in me, that I was able to have a voice and um, just for my own conviction, just following the Lord, just my time with him is that sometimes we just tend to reject how other people have treated us in their brokenness and in their pain, um, not just what God is like, but really God is not like how other people treat us at all. God is only good and he's only love. It was a process for me to just really grasp this and really grasp the idea that I'm no longer slave to fear and uh, God has set me free. And uh, just throughout the past few years, it's just been a journey because um, I just really learned how to just trust the Lord and that He's preparing the way for me. And uh, just over the past two years, the Lord has led me to PCB, ran a marathon, um, flew solo to Boston, and uh, went to North Carolina, and then went to India. Then the next year, I'll be heading out to California to live there. And uh, I've just seen God move in so many different ways throughout these past two years, but probably the most, probably one of the most important things I've learned over that time is just how important it is just to be his daughter and just to know that he's a good father. Because uh, I mentioned that I went to North Carolina. I went last summer for a summer camp. And uh, it's called the Antiquan Journey. And basically um, what they really try to teach there is that who you are is not your gifting. Who you are is that you're a son or daughter of God and that matters first before anything else that you try to do for God or try to do for anyone else. That your identity is just, just truly just rooted in Him. And uh, throughout the week, um, they another thing that they do there is that they just really focus on creativity. And uh, so we did, throughout the week, we just worked on a creative writing piece of just the truth that God speaks over us. And uh, I'm going to read the declaration that I wrote because we ended up sharing it the last night that uh, we were there. Um, in front of everyone. And I just want you guys just to be able to see the victory that Jesus has had in my life over fear and just over my voice. 
he told me, unravel your heart so it's free to beat, free to pump, free to pound, free to live. Free to pump not only blood, but the waters from the well within my heart. There are strings that wrapped around my mouth and closed in on my throat, suffocating me in my voice. Jesus cut those strings. I will not be silent. The more I speak, the more the enemy waves his white flag. I am alive. I am free. Fear has lost its grip on my vocabulary, and the language of love is no longer foreign to me. I declare that I am a daughter. I am a daughter of the one who sings a song of mercy over me. I am a voice. I am alive. I am free. The father never stops being a father, so I will continue to be his daughter. And uh, I read the declaration because it actually ties into the song No Longer Slaves, because before I headed out to the summer camp, I just spent time with the Lord, just asking him to prepare my heart for this week. And uh, he just invited me to ask him what the lyrics of the song No Longer Slaves meant in my life. And uh, just from what he revealed through the lyrics, a lot of that I just put in that uh, declaration because that is truth that, that he's spoken over my life. And uh, so yeah, again, a couple, like even a couple years ago that I was just so afraid and just, just living in fear and did not believe that God um, was who he says he was. But, um, I just want to leave this that Jesus can transform my life and give me the confidence to even be up here, just be have the confidence just to be able to speak. Then there's nothing holding me back from transforming your life because there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. So I just really encourage you that if you're someone in here that's just struggling with fear and uh, you, it's just been something that you've been dealing with a long time, I just want to say that. God, God knows that you've been struggling with this, and He wants to set you free. There's always an invitation into His freedom. And uh, we're about to jump into the song, No Longer Slaves, and I just really want to encourage you to just sing it out as you believe it. Whether you believe it or not that you're a child of God, I just want you to know that uh, Jesus said we worship God because he's, he's worthy. Before we even knew that He was worthy, He said that we were worth it on the cross. So just worship Him with all that you have and just believe that he is who he says he is and just invite, invite him to just show himself to you because he's always going to. There's always an invitation. And uh, yeah, um, there's just no greater freedom than knowing who you are and who you belong to. Oh, deliverance from my enemies. 